Hello and welcome to the Peace and All Good podcast. I am your host, Shelly Roeder, and I am so grateful that you're here today. I just want to say it's been a month that we have been publishing these podcasts, and I am just so grateful to each and every one of you who is listening, to those of you who've subscribed and who have shared the podcast. Thank you so much. We are just really grateful to have your support in that way and want to encourage those of you who have not yet subscribed, please do so. We are on lots of different platforms now, and those are being added all the time as I figure out which new ones I need to be on. So um, we hope that we can reach a wider audience to bring this message of peace and goodness uh, to all parts of the world. Um, So we appreciate your support in helping us do that. Today's episode is brought to you by Lavender Bar Soap, which is our flagship product. And it makes sense that it's Deacon Steve's um, favorite for when he showers at night because lavender is calming. And we deal with some pretty stressful situations at Franciscan Peacemakers, as you might imagine. And today's episode, we're talking with Deacon Steve again because this summer has really revealed to us just how prevalent this issue of trafficking is. We're in a period of economic downturn, and over the years that has significantly increased the number of women who are on the street. So Deacon Steve wanted to address that specifically today. So we decided to do what they do with the professional ball players, right, um, in games now where they mic them up for the game. We've mic'd up Deacon Steve on Outreach. And so you'll get to ride along with Cynthia and Deacon Steve and myself as we do outreach on the streets to listen to Deacon Steve's reflections on what's going on based on his conversations with the ladies that we serve, based on his many years of experience in this work. And we'll hear specifically how street prostitution is a part of the continuum of human sex trafficking where it fits into the mix, how it relates, how it's similar, how it's different than the trafficking we heard about last week from Deb and Wendy. This is really valuable information to recognize the small ways that we contribute to the problem and um, also to see it as a holistic issue, right? To not just make it the question of why don't those women make different choices, but instead, um, I think of the quote Peter Morin, the co-founder of the Catholic Worker Movement, said, let's create a world where it's easy for people to do good, right? So thinking about how can we create a world where it's easy for people in struggle to make healthy choices for themselves and for the world. Uh, So I hope that you take something from this episode that you can apply to your life and enjoy riding along with Mike up Deacon Steve, Cynthia, and myself. Good morning. Hey, Deacon Steve. How are you? Good. Good morning, young lady. Good morning. You stay you safe. What's been different on outreach in the last month is um, still an increased number of women that are out there, and specifically in an age group uh mid to late 40s early 50s last week when i talked with three different women uh, throughout the north side so they weren't in the same neighborhoods and each telling me what was going on with them um, primarily as a result of the pandemic that they had lost their jobs in with two of the women they were working two jobs and they each said in their own way that it was embarrassing for them to return to something they did in their 20s Uh, but they're still waiting for unemployment to kick in uh, waiting for any type of assistance to kick in and for one woman she was out here turn as much money as she can so she could make her house payment And, and so this is a another group of individuals another group of women who feel they have no recourse and i and i should add they all said they have been applying for work and they haven't heard anything back from anybody 
morning. Would you like a lunch? Yeah. Of course. Oh my God. Thank you, man, so much. You're welcome. God bless you. Yeah. The older women we encountered are are telling us, you know, it's because of an economic situation. And I think we're probably seeing the same thing with um, uh, younger women that um, we're seeing more because it's, it's something to bring money in. Um, I can't say that for sure if that's a contributor, but for all the different economic downturns I've seen over 25 years, um, I haven't seen it spike in the number of women like it is this go around. Summers typically are busy, busier than the, the cold months. Typically in summer would be 15 and we're probably in the 20 to 22 on average. Um, I know we had days last week we were in the 30s You're welcome. Is there water or anything? It should be something to drink in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You take care. God bless you. Some of the women I've talked to, some other outreach workers, and said now that they are being forced to sell drugs as well as their bodies to bring in more money for the pimps, traffickers, and they can only sell a certain amount of drugs to a customer at any given time because they want that customer to keep coming back. And so the women feel like they're putting, their lives are being put into more danger uh, because if they don't have enough product, um, they've been assaulted over um, that situation they've been robbed of the drugs and then they have to come up with the money to cover the drugs. Um, and that seems to be a new phenomena. You know, I've heard about it in the past here and there, but not, um, maybe not to the point that it's happening more and more. And a lot of that's been verified by uh, different people in law enforcement that I've talked with in the last few weeks. Uh, that those things are happening and it's increasing. Good morning. Would you like a lunch? Uh, would you like a lunch? Yeah. I don't want to that. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. have something with a couple of dollars. Uh, just you one. You don't bring no money out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. So the pathways that have brought women to the streets a lot of times started when they were underage or they could have been uh, legal where they got talked into working at strip clubs and so they were clean they were considered to be at an age um, and and the traffickers pimps would try to keep them off of drugs because they were worth more clean. And as their lives in um, in strip clubs, escorts, um, working parties, the longer that went, they did turn to drugs, they turned to alcohol, and when they were deemed worthless, they were, you know, turned out and they found their way to the streets. To continue to do what they knew how to do um, then obviously the income that they were earning in a strip club for instance versus the street um, the streets was maybe five ten percent um, of what they were earning in those other places so the worse an addiction gets is what brings women to the streets most of the time um, as I think about all the stories I heard over the years so, so in addition to women who are, are no longer being have handled by what I would call a high-end trafficker um, they 
start getting protection from guys who are drug dealers on the streets. Um, these guys are looking to be making extra money, and so they promise to protect the women so they can carry on their trade, and then they end up taking their money, and they're just you know, being, and I don't even like saying this word, but they're being handled by a lower grade of pimp, if you will. Um, you know, we, it's probably not very nice, but we call them the pimp wannabes. Uh, but they, they, you know, they use these women for a way for them to earn their living. And they use the same um, ways to manipulate and to control. But typically a street pimp will be more violent. And so, you know, there's still the, not the sense, but the re the reality of being trapped. And, um, you know, the thing of falling in love, the, the guy wants to be their boyfriend. And, you know, some of these guys we've seen over the years begin to use that woman to start recruiting other women on the street to get them into his stable. And... Um, I suspect it leads to things um, like what happened by uh, our place uh, where one pimp shot another pimp. Uh, and it was probably a dispute over who these women belonged to. And, um, you know, so just continuing to devalue the humanity of these women. And that's what it always comes down to, whether online, on the streets, even the Johns that are renting the bodies of these women, it's devaluing, um, thinking of them less, less than human. Good morning. We got some food this morning. Uh -huh. Some food, we have food. You guys are so Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. God bless you. Pray for me. My name is Holly. Okay, okay Holly. Holly. Nice to meet you. Pray for me. I will, Holly. Hard, please. I need it. Thank you. Okay. You're awesome. Have you seen her before? I've never seen her either. So that was snippets of our hour and a half long or two hour long outreach on the streets from last week, the last week of July, 2020. And I purposefully left in to the conversation with Deacon Steve snippets of the outreach experience, the, the encounters that we have with women on the street. I did not obviously show footage of their faces to protect their anonymity, but wanted people, wanted our listeners to have an experience of hearing the voices and hearing the quality of those engagements, those encounters with women on the street. Hopefully you heard some of the familiarity in their voices uh, when they, hey, Dick and Steve, or, hi, Cynthia. Um, and the God bless you's and the thank you's and the pray for me's. Um, that's the everyday occurrence on, on outreach. And for those of you who support us and our ministry, know that those thank you's go right, right straight back to you for your support for this work. And we ask that you hold our ladies in prayer as well. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to leave that those snippets in is I think it speaks to this issue of rehumanizing the ladies who we serve. Deacon Steve made it very clear that part of the reason trafficking continues, whether it's online trafficking, whether it's um, that lower level of pimp on the street or um, the you know people playing on the vulnerabilities of ladies on the street using those vulnerabilities to uh, benefit themselves in some way right 
there's an element of exploitation and all of that that is done simply because the ladies are seen as less than human. And that dehumanization process really begins with our language. I will link an article, or an excerpt from Brene Brown's book, Braving the Wilderness, that discusses this very uh, issue of dehumanization and is a place that each and every one of us can work to change the way that we talk about people, the way that we um, use language to dehumanize is something that probably all of us have participated in to some extent and that we can work to change. And this for me, I, I didn't get another um, piece of input from Deacon Steve uh, about his own spiritual practice because I, I thought this would be a really great week to share an insight that happened for me after doing outreach several months with the peacemakers. I have a very fond memory of shortly after graduating college, I lived in community with the Capuchin Franciscans as a part of Cap Corps. Um, and I lived at St. Ben's and the friars at St. Ben's here in Milwaukee had made the commitment to use inclusive language in their prayer. And it was really hard for me at first to do, um, to pray that way. I liked it and it was uncomfortable. Um, and over the years, I've had moments, you know, in, in trying to practice inclusive prayer and all that means is simply referring to God as both mother and father, of highlighting the feminine images of God and including them, bringing them into the fold, into the language, remembering that God is no gender um, and that we can imagine God in all different sorts of ways and to not lose sight of the power of a feminine expression of God. Um, but throughout the years as I've practiced that, I've, I've noticed that there are times when I bristle at, a, at the idea a little bit, like, you know, is this really that important? Um, it, it, with all the things going on in the world, war, famine, death, disease, injustice, mass incarceration, human trafficking, right? Is using inclusive language in prayer really that important? And I have to say that one of the very first reflections I had after doing outreach on the streets here with Deacon Steve and Franciscan Peacemakers was just how important that expression of prayer using feminine imagery of God is, simply because it allows everyone to access the memory that we are created in God's image, each of us, all of us, however we identify, feminine, masculine, transgender, all of us are created in the image and likeness of God. And all of us should have access to images of God that represent that bigness of God, that inclusivity of God, that radical inclusive in, radical inclusive, I can't say that word, Radic, a radically inclusive God, right? And that that is an important part to creating the world that we know is possible. So I have a prayer that we'll end with today as a part of that challenge to become the kind of people um, who are thinking about the world differently, thinking about God differently, thinking about ourselves differently, a prayer that might help spark our imagination about what we've been missing out if we have not had the chance to pray in a way that includes images of God that are feminine. Maternal God, you conceive us, give birth to us, nurse us, smile at us every day, protect us, feed us, give us words to say, show us how to walk, cheer for us in our successes, wipe our tears when we fail, encourage us, dream big for us, and love us for who we are. 
thank you that you do not give up on us when we don't call home, forget to visit, disappoint you, neglect what you've done for us and think we did it by ourselves. Open our eyes to see those who need the embrace of your mothering love, who need someone to be their champion, someone to always give the cup of cold water and the second mile. Help us this week to take your love to heart and embody it like Jesus, deeply and tenderly. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week. Be sure to use promo code DEACONPOD to get 20% off all lavender soap. It makes the perfect present. Everybody loves lavender. And so stock up for Christmas, for back to school gifts, um, graduation presents, just 20% uh, off. Why not? It's our best seller. People love it. I bet you will too. And until next week, peace and all good.